Today I want to talk about when Shanann came home from North Carolina. One of the things that I talk about is how he took this photo of the doll with the plastic sheet over it and he said that the children had arranged the doll like that. I personally don't believe that's the case. I think Chris Watts arranged the doll with the plastic sheet over it and I'm going to talk about that more in the video. In part two of this series, I looked at the way Chris Watts was behaving when he went to visit Shanann and the children in North Carolina. And um, towards the end of that trip, when they were getting ready to go home, Shanann's mother was really concerned about Shanann going back home because she could see the way that Chris was behaving. You know, she'd seen the way he was driving really erratically and she knew that things weren't right. And so she said to Shanann to stay um, in North Carolina and Shanann said that Chris's health insurance was better than hers and she needed to go back. And, and I've also talked a bit about how Shanann had sent Chris these text messages that were angry that he didn't stand up to his mother um, and how Chris had managed to shift the power around so that Shanann went from being angry at him to being really desperate to hold on to the marriage, you know. Um, so she's now in a very vulnerable position because he's said to her that he doesn't really want the baby and um, when she's asked if he loves her, um, he hasn't responded in a, in a sort of um, reassuring way. So back home in Colorado, um, Shanann is, is messaging her friends, um, really keen to, um, to make things work with Chris to try to fix whatever's wrong with the relationship and she doesn't really know what's wrong with it because Chris hasn't given her enough information. So Chris wasn't giving anything to Shanann, he was being really vague and this is what I talked about in the other video about how he was stonewalling her. So she didn't really know where she stood and she was left in this confused sort of place where she was getting increasingly desperate to sort things out with him. And a narcissist will use confusion. That's, that's one of their strongest tactics is confusing their victim. Because if somebody's confused, they're not feeling like they've got both feet on the ground and that they can think objectively about things and they're gonna be more vulnerable. The day after Shanann got back from North Carolina, she had a massive clear out of the house that they lived in. Um, she unpacked the suitcases and she did all of this organizing. Um, and she was talking about that on Facebook. Um, and, you know, that, that may well have been that she was feeling really anxious and she wanted to distract herself. And maybe that was one of the ways Shanann would pick to distract herself. Just a few days before Chris killed Shanann, um, on the Thursday, so, so she, she was killed on the Sunday night, sort of the early hours of Monday. Um, so just a few days before he killed her, he sent her a photograph of a doll with a plastic sheet on it lying on a sofa. And he said to her that the kids had, um, had, had done this, that they'd put this sheet over the doll. That would have been a very strange photograph to receive. Receiving a photo like that would have, I, I would imagine, have given her a bit of a strange feeling. And I think that her confusion was exactly what Chris wanted, you know. He would have sent that photo to her because he would have wanted to get a reaction and he even if he didn't see her face because he sent it in a text message he would have got supply from um, from just knowing how she would have felt a bit uh, confused and a bit on edge receiving that photograph and supply is something I've talked about in previous videos um, and how um, how it's the sort of ego boost that a narcissist will get from people, um, from causing them to have an emotional reaction. Shortly before Shanann went to go um, to Arizona for her business trip, Chris started to come around, or so Shanann thought, um, and this started when he went to the scan with her. I believe at this stage he'd already decided to murder his family. And I believe that the reason he was appearing to be coming around is because everything would be a lot easier for him if Shanann trusted him. Um, 
it would just be a lot easier to kill them all. But I also think that by having her really hopeful that things could be worked out, he was getting a lot of supply because he was he he could feel just how desperately she wanted him and how you know how important he was to her. So by giving her that hope, he um, had all of the power, and um, so so he had almost um, almost discarded her, and then and then said, oh no, actually maybe we can make things work, and and. Um, so in that sense, he was being a puppeteer, you know, and she was, um, her, her emotions were completely changing depending on, um, on whether he felt it wasn't going to work or whether he seemed to feel like it was going to work, you know. So he would have got a lot of supply and enjoyment from watching her go through these different emotions all because of him. Chris was sleeping in the basement when they got back from North Carolina. Um, and it's interesting to think of why he was doing that. I mean, obviously he had, um, he had his relationship with uh, Nicole going on um, and he and Shanann weren't sexually intimate, um, but it was quite a drastic thing to not even sleep next to her. And I wonder if that was um, more because he, um, he wanted to draw away from her and he wanted to cause that effect of drawing away from her. A narcissist is very good at completely taking the ground from underneath their partner's feet in order to manipulate and control them. And by sleeping in a separate room, that would have been quite a drastic measure that would have been really unsettling for Shanann and made her all the more desperate to hold on to him. When Shanann was in Arizona, Chris took Nick, Nicole out for dinner um, and when Shanann saw the bill and heard they were laid out, things didn't seem right. Um, now it's interesting that Chris Watts chose that night to not use his vouchers to pay for the meal. He used their credit card and he'd so far avoided doing that because Shanann would see um, that he was spending money on the credit card. And I think that that was another way to get confusion out of Shanann, because obviously she saw the money um, and felt really uneasy and confused and, and very concerned that he was having an affair. So why would he have chosen that night to, to let her feel like that? I think it was because he would have been getting supply from her going through all of these fears you know, and all of this confusion. On the one hand, he seems to be being nice to her, he seems interested again. On the other hand, is he having an affair? Things aren't adding up. At this point, he'd already decided he was gonna kill her. He had nothing to lose, so he didn't need to, um, he didn't need to hide it from her. But on the other hand, he needed her to trust him um, so that he could murder her. And he also, um, got supply from, um, from, from her trust and her confusion, you know, and, and the, the, the big emotional roller coaster that she was on at that time. This was a photo that Shanann sent to her friend about a week before she died, and it shows how exhausted she was from this emotional roller coaster that she was on, you know, and um, you can see that her face looks completely drained. Shanann was very afraid to go on her business trip because she really, she was really keen to work things out with him. So on the night that Shanann Watts was murdered, she was at the airport with her friends, um, worrying about whether she was going to get home to see Chris Watts that night. She was very keen to get home, as I've said, because she wanted to repair the relationship. She believed that something must have gone wrong and that she had some power to, to change that. And this is very common for a victim of narcissistic abuse, that they feel like there's something they can do to make the situation better. And the reason they feel like that is because the narcissist will manipulate the situation to suggest that it's the victim that's causing the narcissist to behave very coldly and in a very distant way. You know, to suggest that they've done something that's so wrong that the narcissist just can't go near them anymore. 
So Shanann was at the airport and she was worried that the delay to the plane was going to mean that she wasn't going to be able to get back to her husband that night. And she put a post on Facebook just saying that she couldn't wait to see him and the girls. And obviously it's, it's just tragic that she was so keen to get back to sort things out with him and she was running back towards her death. And she put that on Facebook in the same way as she always put all of these compliments about how amazing Chris Watts was on her Facebook. And I wonder if the reason she wrote that um, status update was to send a message to Chris to say, um, you know, to show that, to show how much he meant to her to try to help repair the damage by sending that message. And the other times when she would write really positive things about Chris um, on Facebook could well have been a result of him at that time being distant after an argument, you know? And um, it could have been a, another, a way to try to get him back, to try to get him back on side and to try to get him to see how much he meant to her to, in order to improve the relationship. So I'm going to leave that there and in the next video I'm going to talk about the night of the murders from the point of view of what Chris Watts may have been going through, the way his mind might have worked and why he would have killed his family in the way he did, why he would have dumped their bodies in the way he did and the way he behaved straight after the murders. So please subscribe. Um, please let me know uh, what you think, if you have any views about this and if you have any questions, uh, please put them in the comments section and I look forward to reading them. Thank you.